Hello, you beautiful people of the internet. My name is Michael Creek, and today we are going to start a new series called Max MSP in a nutshell. Now, the hulking monstrosity you can see back there is actually not as complicated as it looks like, but it is a modular synthesizer that I've built recently, and I want to recreate this patch with all of you. So, this video is kind of going to be the hub where I first persuade you to actually patch your own modular synthesizer, although it might sound daunting and very useless. And then in individual video series, we're going to create those different elements of a modular synthesizer. So first of all, why would you want to uh, make a modular synthesizer? I think it serves two purposes. The one thing is it's very good groundwork for your patching abilities on Max MSP because you, you work with a lot of very basic objects and, you know, Max MSP is about creating sounds and this is creating sounds at the most basic level. And also a lot of the things that you use, like uh, creating envelopes and stuff, is something that you are going to use in all of your other Max patches anyway because uh, those things are just so essential to making sounds in music. The second argument is that, you know, a lot of people recently asked me, you know, Michael, I want to get into electronic music. I just have one question. What should I get? Should I get the Axis Virus or should I get the Diva or should I get the Massive Synth? And I've got like, no, don't do that. That's, that's silly buggers. What you do is you get yourself a good book and a modular synthesizer and you work through that book because what you really want to learn first when you make electronic music is how those building blocks of synthesizers work. Because um, with the help of a modular synthesizer, you can learn how everything works at its core on a very basic level. And then once you've understood that, you can get yourself any synthesizer you want and you will immediately be able to work with it because the elements of all those fancy new synthesizers are, give or take, a few odd bits, the same stuff that has already been in the modular synthesizers before. And it also helps you with two things. One thing is it avoids some pitfalls I've seen keyboard players do, which is twiddle knobs until you find something interesting. And then by twiddling knobs, find out what those knobs actually do. And that might be a very good idea for a lot of instruments. For example, if you're playing the organ or an electric piano, I think it's a good idea to test out what all the knobs do and then just work from there. But with a synthesizer where stuff like routing is very important, the function that any of your knobs or encoders has can vary wildly depending on where you route it. And so um, I've seen some people come to conclusions that are not very accurate because they think that this knob does this kind of wobbly effect, but then it's actually just an, an LFO and it can do all kinds of stuff. Reason number two. I, I think I actually forgot reason number two, but it was a very sound reason. So believe me, there's all kinds of reasons to learn this stuff. If you already know what subtractive synthesis is and what control voltages are, feel free to jump directly into this video up here, probably. And we're going to go straight to patching. For everybody else, uh, I'm just gonna show you one more perk that modular synthesis has. And uh, then we're gonna go into a little theoretical explanation about all those building blocks. So we understand why we want to build them the way they are built. One thing that modular synthesis is very famous for is you can just uh, try out a lot of stuff and do very experimental sounds. For example, I have here a very um, conventional synthesizer sound. And um, what you can do with a modular synthesizer is you can take anything and put it anywhere. So for example, if we wanted to have our first oscillator uh, frequency modulate the second one, we can do this. And it's going to change the sound quite drastically. Yeah, yeah. Or if we wanted to have our LFO also change the character of our first oscillator, which looks really freaking funny, it will sound like this. Which is actually quite similar, but then maybe we can make this one the pulse. 
pulse wave. Oh yeah, there we go. So you can see, um, there's a lot of stuff that can be tried out in modular synthesis, and the biggest boon is actually uh, the one that each module can be just copied at any time, and you can try all sorts of combinations. So, what is synthesis in a nutshell? Well, that's quite easy actually. I'm sorry for already having painted all the interesting stuff in here. I, I did this video before and then my computer kind of crashed, but I still have the image, so what the hoo-ha. Now, the one thing you need to believe when you want to get into modular synthesis is everything is voltage. Listen and repeat. Everything is voltage. There is no discrimination between what a signal is and what a modulator is. Although some people will tell you that, oh no no, this is signal voltage and this is control voltage, but nope. Everything is just voltage. The thing is that uh, some of those kinds of voltages have been used as signal voltages a lot and other kinds of voltage have been used to control other parameters. But this is completely arbitrary. You see, back in the day, when synthesizers were built first, all the parts have been there already. There were oscillators, and there were capacitors, and there were all kinds of stuff, and they were used in, I don't know, in industry and everything, <laughs> basically. So somebody thought, why not make this into an instrument? Because, you know, a speaker works like this. You have this membrane, and this membrane can move between uh, two extremes. You have the membrane all the way pulled back by the magnet and you have the membrane all the way pushed away from the magnet. So any kind of sound you hear through your speakers is just a membrane moving back and forth at different intervals. So it's it came very naturally that an oscillator could be used in conjunction with a speaker. Because what a VCO does, which stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator, is it creates a basic kind of waveform that might have a few different shapes. It could be a triangle or a pulse wave or a sawtooth or something else. And it will just all the time create this very quick oscillating thing. And you know, I've made this all fiddly and stuff because your oscillator usually starts in the audible range, which is about 40 hertz, which means 40 oscillations per second. And then it goes up to, I don't know, 16,000 oscillations per second. So it, it looks kind of messy, but it's just a very simple waveform, like a triangle that moves very fast. And it does it all the time. So if you just put your oscillator to your speakers, you would hear a sound all day, which is annoying, which is why we have envelopes. An envelope is a thing that envelops something else. So, in terms of voltage, that means that the envelope starts at your minimum kind of voltage. And then when you start it, you give it a thing called a trigger or a gate signal. So when the envelope receives a gate signal, it will start moving up to maximum voltage and when it's reached its peak, it's going to go back down up to a level that is defined by a parameter called sustain, and then it's going to stay there until your envelope gets the next message, which is there is no gate signal anymore, and then it's going to start the release phase. Now, you might have seen this kind of thing, attack decay sustain release. It's very common. It's not actually restrictive so your envelope could be anything you could just draw random shapes in here and it would all be envelopes it's just that the ADSR envelope has been found to resemble most of the actual instruments that exists very well because for example a flute has an attack phase when you start exhaling into it and then it has a release phase when you stop it and uh, that's basically it. So the one thing to notice is that your parameters attack and decay and release are time sensitive, whereas sustain is, um, I call it intensity sensitive. What does that mean? When you change your attack parameter on an envelope, it means that the time that the envelope takes to reach its top 
will differ. So it could take longer for the envelope to reach the top and then continue. And the same is true for decay and release time. Whereas the sustain cannot have anything to do with the time because the sustain phase um, sustains as long as there is still a gate signal. So you as the keyboard player decide when the sustain phase ends by releasing your key and um, then the release phase is going to start. So the sustain level instead dictates how high is the sustain. Is it here or is it down here or is it up here? All right. We skip the LFO because it's basically just a VCO. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So it's also an oscillator, just it is very, very slow. In fact, it is so slow that usually if you put a LFO directly to your speakers, you're not going to hear anything because it's below our audible range, which makes the LFO more suitable to modulate other stuff. Because as with everything in modular synthesis, you can take every kind of voltage you get and put it in any kind of input that one of your modules might have and it's gonna work because it's all just voltage, remember. Next up, the VCA is something that is easily missed because it's so subtle. It's the voltage controlled amplifier, which is a total lie because it does not amplify anything. Instead, it should be called something like a voltage controlled decreaser or something or suppressor. Because um, as you see, all the modules we've talked about before they go through uh, both extremes. So your oscillator oscillates between the lowest possible voltage to the highest possible voltage. And the same goes for the LFO and the envelope, usually. Now, maybe if you want your LFO to modulate something, like modulate the frequency of your oscillator, but you don't want it to modulate it quite as hard, you could first plug your LFO in a voltage-controlled amplifier, and reduce its level from 1 to somewhere between 0 and 1. So uh, mostly you put a VCA between something's output and then another thing's input to regulate how much it's going to modulate the other thing. And also you usually put a VCA at the end of your chain because then it's just like your master volume slider. The last module we are going to talk about is the VCF, the Voltage Controlled Filter. It works a bit different than the other modules because it's not very easy to show what a filter does in a voltage spectrum. So instead I chose the frequency spectrum, which starts at 40 hertz here and 16k hertz there. And um, usually when you have your signal from an oscillator, depending on what kind of waveform it is, it's going to have a lot of overtones. So the sawtooth, if I'm not mistaken, has every harmonic overtone and they grow softer by only, I think, six decibels per octave. So even if you play a low note, like something like here, and you're gonna have a peak here, then you're gonna have your overtones here and here and here and here and here and here and here, and it's gonna be a lot of signal. And a voltage-controlled filter is going to help you with that by picking a certain frequency and cutting off everything either above or below that. So this looks kind of messy, but uh, what it initially was, was you can see here, um, we have our uh, cutoff frequency marked here. And this is the model of a low pass filter, which means everything below our cutoff frequency is not modified in any way. And then when you reach your cutoff frequency, the signal is going to grow softer and softer until it's not audible anymore. A high pass filter does exactly the opposite, which means everything above your cutoff is going to come through and then it's going to cut off the rest. Why did I paint two of these together? That's because if you add a low pass and a high pass filter in sequence, then you're going to get a band pass filter, which is going to only let through this kind of little bell you see here. Whereas if you take a low pass filter and a high pass filter in parallel, you're going to get a notch filter. So a notch filter is going to have one cutoff frequency maybe here and one cutoff frequency maybe here. And the first one is going to be a low pass filter, which means everything here is cut off. And the second one is going to be a high pass filter, which means everything below here is cut off. So what you get is a signal that has almost all of the frequency spectrum 
except for uh, this little part here, which then is usually your global cutoff, which you move around. So those are the kind of classic filters that you have in modular synthesizers. There is more. One more thing to talk about is the keys, because usually for a modular synth, you needed a special kind of keyboard, because um, you needed to get two pieces of information to your synthesizer. One would be the pitch, and the pitch would be determined by a voltage output the keys had that was just increasingly high voltages the higher uh, the button that you pressed. But also, and that's very important, and we already talked about this, your keys also had a gate output, which just was a static, if you press down a button, there's going to be maximum voltage coming out of the gate. And if you release the button, there is minimum voltage coming out of your gate. So you would use these gates, for example, to trigger envelopes. So the one would start an envelope and move it up until the sustain phase. And then the zero voltage in this case would start the release phase of an envelope. So that's all the modules we're going to talk about for modular synthesis. And the one important thing to take away from this is they're all just voltage that are like in different kinds of um, order. So oscillators are a repeating kind of movement in voltage. An envelope is a one-timed event, a one-timed movement in your voltage. And a VCA is a constant value. And you could use anything for anything. So, you know, I talked about the envelope as if you always had it on your oscillator to make it sound like an instrument. But that's not true. You can use an envelope and have it control any parameter of any of those modules. You could have it control the cutoff frequency of your filter. And you could control the intensity that an LFO signal had on another module. So it's all just voltage. Bye-bye. Thank you.